going on everyone? Matt with Tech Performance. Today we're going to go over our speed sensors that we make uh, for GM and Ford applications currently. Uh, this is meant to replace the OE sensor in the tail housing of a Magnum F, a Magnum, a Magnum XL as you see here. The purpose of this is to convert it to a Hall effect sensor. So you can just do like a, a frequency uh, with like a Holly Terminator X specifically. Well, you can read not only speed, but you can read drive shaft RPM and get a little more tuning data out of your out of your combo. Pretty simple. You're just going to unbolt the factory sensor. It's a single bolt. You're going to pull it out, uh, and then you're just going to put this sensor in and uh, install the bolt back. Uh, so the installation pro process for there is, is pretty simple. Um, and then you're going to connect your three wires. So blue is going to be ground. Tan is going to be power and black is going to be the signal wire that goes to the ECU. So ground is just going to be a good chassis ground. And then on your power source, you can do a five volt, you can do a 12 volt. If you're on a 16 volt system, you can do that. Depending on what voltage you supply the sensor with, you're going to have to have a resistor for that voltage. Uh, we'll supply those as well. And in most cases, I'm going to recommend you just do your chassis power. So either 12 or 16 volt and you're going to run a key on source power 12 or 16 volt to the sensor. That way you're not taking up an output from the computer for, you know, a simple reason. Um, unless you already have a circuit dedicated to sensor outputs from your ECU. Uh, if you had a Terminator X or something like that, you're not, you're not going to have a lot of outputs. So I don't recommend doing it that way. So one thing you're going to need to know when you're installing this and tuning your EFI system is the tooth count on the reluctor wheel. Um, most of these Tremex are going to be 12 or 17 tooth. Um, in this case with the XL, this is going to be a 12 tooth that's, that's right here, but I always recommend checking. So, you know, the easiest way to do that is while the sensor is still out, you can, you can look in the hole, mark one of the teeth, turn it, um, and then, and then just continue to count until you get back to your mark. Uh, that way you know what you're working with, because you're going to have to have that information in order to set it up in your computer later. So when installing the sensor and you've got your supply voltage selected, you're going to install your resistor uh, into, the, into the wiring. And the way that we recommend doing that is just looping it through the connector kit that you get. And you're going to loop it between the power supply, which is the tan wire, and the signal wire, which is the black. Uh, so it's just going to kind of go a bridge in between the two, if you will. Crudely, obviously you wouldn't do this, it wouldn't look this way in a, <coughs> in a finished application, but we just put our resistor in between your... Uh, you know, a power source, the power source going to the sensor, and then the signal wire coming to the front. And you'd just hook this, you'd loop this in line with your connector as you, as you pin your connector together. So the reason for the resistor in the, in the system is to make sure that your signal is a clean voltage that the ECU wants to see. So you have to have a resistor based on the input voltage of the sensor. Here's how to test the sensor. Uh, if you think you have a faulty sensor or if uh, something's not working as you, you think that it should. Um, again, simple. Tan wire is your power. Blue wire is your ground. Uh, good chassis ground. And then whatever voltage you have supply, we'll check that. Make sure your resistor's in there. And then, and then your signal wire. So today I've actually got it hooked up to a, a power converter. We're going from a, a wall power of 120 volt down to uh, 13 and a half is as low as I could get it to go today and uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you how to test the sensor so again power ground signal you're gonna take your multimeter and it doesn't really matter which lead but I like to use red for power and I like to just wrap a portion of the wire around really tight that way it doesn't fall off and just lay that to the side and then with your power supplied to the sensor you can then ground your Ground your meter, make sure you have it set to voltage. You can ground your meter, and then you can rotate the input shaft with the transmission and gear, and it will show you a voltage differential um, as the teeth pass the end of the sensor. You can see right here that the numbers are fluctuating where it's passing the teeth in between. Uh, in between there's an air gap, so it voltage drops away and then it picks up voltage as it comes by one of the teeth. Uh, if it wasn't good, it could be a multitude of things. I assume that a sensor could go bad and then you would see like a constant voltage reading or you wouldn't see any voltage at all. But it definitely needs to be making that rising and falling because that's how it knows that it's uh, passing by a tooth and then coming out away from one. All right, so we're just gonna go over briefly how to set up the speed sensor using a Terminator X system. 
<clears throat> the first thing you're going to do is go into your uh, tuning software and you're going to load your base file. Uh, in this case, this is just a simple base file for uh, you know one of Holly's base base maps for a Turbo 58 XLS. Um, we're going to go in here to our input and output folder, and you can see one of the inputs is already being used for dome pressure, and that's fine. We're going to use input number two in this case, and we are going to select enable, and then we're going to select digital speed slash frequency as the type. We know that we've got to configure it, but we'll go ahead and name it speed. And then we'll select configure. Now what that input is going to be is the signal wire from the speed sensor itself. That's what you're going to be using as the input to the ECU. Um, this is how you would set up your speedometer in this case. Uh, so we want to do a 12 pulses per rotation to go along with the Magnum XL that we had. Again, if you have a different tooth count, something like 17, uh, whatever you need, you can go up to 17, down to whatever you need, and if you have a number, you can type it in as well. Uh, for our purposes, it was 12, so we're just going to leave 12 in the, in the space. Uh, gear ratio, again, uh, based on the gear ratio that you have in your vehicle, 410, 373 is a pretty common one. Um, and then tire diameter. So a 28 inch tire, like a 275, 60, 15 is a 28 inch tire. So you can set things that way. And this will give you a mile an hour. Now uh, you can see that this gauge here goes to 999. You can change that display max to say 200 if you want. Uh, so now it's zero to 200. You can change warnings, uh, maximums, minimums, things like that. Again, that's only for uh, that's only going to be for your <clears throat> viewing, like when you're doing your uh, your display here. Uh, so your gauge panel, or if you're looking back at it. Now you can set your uh, drive shaft RPM with this same input, so you don't actually have to have a second input to read specifically drive shaft RPM, and you can do that based off of a math channel. Uh, so you can use a math channel in the in the Holly software. Um, and take this speed that's given with this information and convert that over to actual drive shaft RPM as well. And you can do it the other way. You could set up this to be drive shaft RPM and convert that to speed, whichever way you want to go. So yeah, if you want to use this for drive shaft RPM, specifically instead of mile an hour, so if you're only worried about the RPM of the drive shaft, you would simply select uh, RPM as your type in your setup menu. Again, your 12 pulses per rotation. Uh, that's going to give you one full rotation. And then you can set up your speeds the same way that you would set up your uh, mile per hour speed. So let's say 8,500 RPM, which is a lot for a drive shaft. Um, that's shown in a 10 time multiplier right there. So, so it shows 850 as your max, uh, which is 8,500 RPM. And that would give you a sweep uh, of your drive shaft speed itself specifically. And again, you can use drive shaft speed. Uh, through a math channel to convert that to mile per hour as well. Uh, either way you want to do these things. That way you're only using one input rather than using up two inputs for the same info. Um, but yep, that's the gist of it. Uh, hope you learned something.